Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Continuing discussion of Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 922, Punya Shravana Kirtanaha. This is the third talk I'm giving on this name. Uh, generally in Iskon, our devotees don't think of this as a name, but they know the phrase Punya Shravana Kirtan from Bhagavatam. It occurs several times in Bhagavatam. Most famously in the verse Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shavarna Kirtanaha Hridyantas Tohya Bhadrani Vidhunoti Suhrit Satam Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul, in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. <clears throat> Shravana Kirtana means words. There are various sounds can be made, <clears throat> uh, but generally humans communicate by what we call words, specific sounds which are meant to indicates specific objects or actions or ideas or their words which don't indicate anything but they're put there for grammatical reasons. We don't get that so much in Sanskrit, we get that in English. <clears throat> As the grammars built into the words in Sanskrit and similar other languages also. <clears throat> We think in words, mostly. Those of you who speak more than one language, which is uh, most of the devotees here, not Americans. <laughs> I heard a joke when I was in, last time I was in the Bay Area. Someone asked me, a devotee asked, what do you call someone who speaks two languages. I said, bilingual, what do you speak? Call someone who speaks three languages. Trilingual, what do you speak? What do you call someone who speaks three languages? Multilingual, there's another term also, polyglot. And what do you call someone who speaks one language? An American. <laughs> that was the joke. Why do you need to learn any other language? Because everything's great in America. <clears throat> but we think, yeah, so those, those who speak more than one language may have the experience of dreaming in different languages, thinking in different languages, and mixing up different languages when you're speaking. I, in, in Calcutta, we find people. Without even thinking, they speak a mixture of, many people, they speak a mixture of English, Hindi, and Bengali. <laughs> and I get into it too sometimes <laughs> when I'm there. You're speaking basically in English and with a little Hindi and thrown in and something. And they don't even realize that they're going from one language. We think in, in languages. <clears throat> now, the importance of language, and it's a big, big topic. There's a whole philosophy of language and linguistics, <clears throat> psychology. How does it work? How does it work? And, and they were going back to Plato, the idea of uh, <clears throat> inherency. In, just like we can say, this is a drum. Okay, how do you know it's a drum? Well, it looks like a drum. It seems like a silly question, but what is a drum? Exactly. It is the kind of things philosophers talk about, just like Okay, here's another joke. How many philosophers does it take to put a screw in a wall? 
and the, usually the joke is if like how many Chinese does it take? It takes 100, one to hold the screw and 99 to move the wall, to twirl the wall. But, but, but with, the, with philosopher, the answer is, what is a screw? <laughs> First of all, you have to define it. <laughs> First of all, you have to define it, because, okay, uh, if you took the cover off the drum, it'd still be a drum. If you took th those uh, straps off it, would it still be a drum? And start to disintegrate it, and then you come to, and we come to the Buddhist idea to show that there's no Atma. You know that one? You know it? You, if you... The example is given, there's a chariot. So you take off the wheels, you take off the uh, platform, you take off the seat and there's nothing left. So in the same way, you take off the arms, take off the legs, take away all the parts of the body and there's nothing left. So there's no soul, right? The, what we think is a soul which gives consciousness, it's, it's contingent on certain conditions. So if you, t if you remove the conditions, then there's no consciousness, right? That's the example they give. It's a stupid example, but they, they, they think it's pretty good. And they used to convert people with that, with, with this idea. So words... This is one distinction between humans and animals. Animals also have their languages, we could say, their means of communication. And we can understand to some extent also if, if a dog is uh, distressed or angry, or uh, we, can, we can understand they have different kinds of calls, different kinds of sounds they make. But they don't have developed languages, and we can't say for sure, but they can't communicate abstract ideas. Just like the word drum is an abstract idea. There, there is a... So, we're, we're, the word idea is an abstract idea. It's a concept. Love is mind an, an, is it an abstract, or is it something... Factual. Is it something we can? Well, we, we can, has a whole science about it. So what? In psychology, in the history of psychology, one of the first things they did was dismiss that there's any soul. Psychology means study of the mind. The next thing they got rid of was consciousness. The next thing they got rid of was the mind. And this, you know. No mind, it's just, it's just brain, things reacting in the brain. <coughs> That's their idea. <clears throat> yeah, so Plato, he had the, the idea that there are original prototypes, and that's why, how can we even think of a, of a drum, or a cow, or a camera, or, or a human? There must be some prototype, original prototype, he has the idea which is the essence of all cowness or whatever. <clears throat> so humans are different from animals in as much as they have sophisticated language. And there's some languages are more sophisticated than others in different ways. Sanskrit is recognized as the most sophisticated language by uh, people who study these things, <clears throat> linguists. But there are some there are some things which uh, can't be expressed in Sanskrit, which could, for instance, be expressed in English, because the, the words they come with many words come with cultural connotations. Also, I don't think you use this word in America, bloke. You don't use that word. It's a, it's a British word. Ah, uh, here's an American one, buddy, buddy, okay? 
So you, you don't have that in Sanskrit because it's, it has cultural connotations. <clears throat> English is a very rich language in as much as it imports words from everywhere. And I, I, have, I have trouble when I come to America. I don't know what people are talking about. They mention things. And I, don't know what they're ta- I don't know what they're talking about sometimes. With a, a few years ago, I was with some God brothers and they, one of them mentioned about someone's opera Winfrey, Mo- Winfrey moment. I don't know what you're talking about. And they had to explain to me, oh, okay, Oprah Winfrey moment. The moment you get on the Oprah Winfrey show, and that means something. But it doesn't mean anything to me unless it's explained what it means. So you don't have an Oprah Winfrey moment in Sanskrit. There is a lot of nonsense in Sanskrit also. Sometimes we think that it's just if something's in Sanskrit, it must be authorized. But it's not true. There's a... Uh, Pasmi Bhutasya Dei Hasya King Puna Agamana Obhavet. Srila Prabhupada quotes it. When you die, you die, the body's burned, you're not coming back again. Right? It's in Sanskrit. It's from a shloka. Prabhupada quotes it. Krishna himself talks nonsense. Wait a minute, did I just become an atheist? Well, he tries to convince Nanda Maharaj not to do the Govath, not to do the Indra Puja by speaking atheistic philosophy to his father, Nanda Maharaj. So, so language, it's, it's complex, and knowledge, what we call knowledge, is conveyed via language. <clears throat> and that's the difference between a human and an, and an animal. Ahara nidra bhaya maitunam cha samanya me tat parshubhya naranam. What's the next word? Dharmo hitesham. There's another version. Gyano hitesham. Adiko vishesham. Gyane nahina parshubhya naranam. Animals and humans eat, sleep, mate, and defend. They have that in common. The, the, the special facility of human life is to acquire knowledge. So minus knowledge, a human is an animal by simple arithmetic. That's also a kind of language. A plus B equals C, C minus B equals A. So animal plus knowledge equals human, human minus knowledge equals animal. That's also another kind of, that's another whole big subject, mathematics and philosophy of mathematics. <clears throat> Bertrand Russell in the last century thought he had finished all philosophy by mathematics. He spent about 300 pages proving that one plus one equals two. <laughs> How many pages? It was a lot anyway. <clears throat> Then he found out the problem with language, because it wasn't all mathematics, he had to use English language also. It was a combined effort with Alfred North Whitehead, who was another British philosopher. His Principia Mathematica. So after he finished the book, he found that in Chinese, they don't say the wall is green, they say the wall is greening. And then he had a heart attack because he thought, oh, my soul, but all the logic is based on the English language, but the, lo- the, language, the, the logic doesn't work out in another language. They have different ways of thinking. <laughs> so it becomes very, very complex. Well, humans can have knowledge, and here knowledge means... Ah, jnanam teham savigyanam midam vaksham yasheshataha yajgatva nehabuyo nyajgata vyama vishishate. Knowledge, Krishna says, I will speak to you now, Arjuna, knowledge, which is supposed to be acted upon so you can realize, then it transforms into vigyana. I'll tell you, by knowing which, you won't have to know anything else. So the animals also have knowledge. They have, in some ways, knowledge 
greater than we have. The birds can make a nest. I don't think any scientist, maybe if they studied all their life, they could make an imitation nest. <clears throat> Not by finding pieces of straw and picking it up with their mouth and putting it in place. <clears throat> so they have some kind of knowledge. But here, the, when it said knowledge is what distinguishes human from an animal, that is that means the the, the knowledge of the self, atma tattva, knowledge of the self. Apashyatam atma tattvam griheshu grihamedhinam. Most people don't; they're just absorbed in their family lives. They don't see what is the truth of the self. <clears throat> now, jnana is transmitted in words and that's also some kind of mystical process that how someone says something and it's understood by the other. And you pick it in childhood, language is picked up very quickly. As you get older, it's more difficult. If you raise your child with two or three languages, I, I know some parents do that. One speaks one language to the child, another speaks another language to the child, and outside, in the big bad world, outside the house, it's the, the main language is another language. So this way they grow up. And it's, it's, uh, it is an enriching, I, I assure you, all you Americans, that it is enriching to know more than one language. <clears throat> it helps you to think differently uh, in, a, in a broader way. <clears throat> there, there are transcendental Words. Words are generally used to uh, conduct matters of this material world, but there are words from beyond time and space which connect us to the transcendental sphere. And they can be transmitted by persons who are in contact with that spiritual atmosphere beyond time and space. Someone who speaks about, uh, for instance, uh, peristalsis within the lower intestine. They can say the words. But if you just hear the word and repeat it and you don't know what peristalsis means, you're not able to communicate the idea. What does it mean? It just means movement, that's all. But doctors, they have to speak. They have to speak in words which other people don't understand. It's part of the game. <laughs> so you can say it, but you can't communicate it unless you know what it means, and you can't communicate usefully unless you're trained as a doctor in this case. <clears throat> so one can communicate the message of the transcendental word, world if one is in touch with the transcendental world. And one comes in touch, first of all, by hearing. Otherwise, you c we can see things, but seeing but not seeing. Pashanapina pashati. It needs to be explained to us. Just like uh, the teacher writes on the board. I don't know what they do nowadays, but they used to write on a board. Maybe it's all on a screen now. I don't know. Uh, I've several times <laughs> given this example. I remember in school, the first time our teacher introduced calculus. And... Uh, What's that? Uh, we could see the same squiggles that he saw, but it didn't mean anything to us until he explained it 
using words. And then we can understand. Now I don't understand. I forgot it all. I can recognize what's calculus, but I, I wouldn't have a clue what to do with it. But maybe if it was explained, I could pick it up quicker than someone who never did it. <clears throat> so we may see but not understand. Just like uh, one object, you see a cow. I never say, it's a cow, it's a cow, it's a cow. But a veterinarian will see this is a, for instance, a Hereford cow or a Swiss brown. They can say what the breed is. And if it's a heifer, they can look and see and is, it, is it a male or a female. Uh, the vet, just by looking, can say, oh, sick, this cow is sick. I'll tell you another, <laughs> another anecdote I came across. It's interesting, not, not directly spiritual. But <laughs> that uh, the Ayurvedic doctors, they feel what's the, the condition of the patient by the pulse. Nadi Pariksha, yes. And the women, they used to do them. The doctor means a man, used to be. So how do they test the women? A woman doesn't come in front of a man who's not her husband. So they're from behind a screen, they have a little thread. They hold that and they buy that. So uh, someone wanted to play a joke, so they brought a female buffalo behind. The screen and and brought the brought the uh, thread, and he said, "She's hungry. Give her some grass." <laughs> <laughs> so the story goes. <clears throat> so how did the how did he learn? Well, by being shown, by experience, but also so many words are required. So many words are required. Transcendental words give us information about the spiritual world. This is the subject of punya shravana kirtana. Otherwise, hearing and speaking is going on all over the world. So many languages. So many words. People speak, people hear, people are very interested to know what's going on in the world around them. Talking, 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 so many things. The, uh, now I'm talking about Shravana Kirtan, which is not Punya. There are two kinds. One which is uplifting and the other which is degrading. So talking so many things, so many books. I believe that the... Uh, the biggest library in the world, is that New York Public Library? Is that it? How many millions of books are there? It used to be Nalanda. They, they had so many books. Apparently, they, the, 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 uh, the religion of peace people, when they went there, they took them like a month to burn it all. There are so many books. Hmm? Eight, months. Eight months, they say. Yeah. Whatever. So, so many manuscripts in those days. There wouldn't be books, manuscripts. So, so many books on so many things. Therefore, I don't remember, but it is a subhashita. It means, uh, uh, what we call that? It's a, uh, a proverb, you could say, or a didactic saying. Didactic means that which gives moral instruction. That life is short and there are so many things which you can do and learn about, so better concentrate on that which is really important. And that comes in learning also. We can, we can read so many things. Better select that which will be to be for our actual interest. I see so many books in devotees' homes. and um, I go travel here and there. So many books. Mostly they're in mint condition. <laughs> it's never been opened. It's a nice idea. Maybe, a, maybe when I retire, 
I'll I'll read the books. I don't know what the thought is, but lots of books. Big books, small books, medium books. At least in the devotees' homes, they're mostly on the subject of which is punya, that is uplifting. We send children to school with it. It's good, yeah, it's really good. We send the children to school. It's really, really good. Now, it used to be they didn't go to school. Now we send them all to school to indoctrinate them with all our ideas in form of words. Children learn by hearing and by seeing. They learn from the behavior of others around them. But they... They learn so much. That's the whole idea of sending them to school so they can, they can learn, become educated, so they can become, they can get a good job, which means they get a little more money than a, a bad job. <laughs> and they can work all their life and get something and eat, sleep, pass stool and die and they can have an American flag on their coffin. It's good American, worked hard. Newspapers, magazines, now internet, broadcasts, television, now YouTube, so many things. Internet, radio, there's a great ocean of words which is ever expanding. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Talk and talk and talk. 24 hours a day. We, there used to be this uh, shortwave radio you could pick up from d different places around the world. People speaking in different languages from different parts of Europe. What is the benefit? Famous last words. That's another thing. Famous last words. F best famous last words are Hare Krishna. If that's our last words, we're doing well. Well, that's why we have to go on hearing. There's so much nonsense being spoken describing nothing of any real consequence. I said, well, it's very important. You should be a good citizen, and then you should know who to vote for. So you have to see Trump or Biden, and you should know, right? You should read the, and see what's going on and make a make an informed decision. Nothing, nothing there. Birth, death, old age, and disease. Going on and on and on. In this regard, I'll quote from uh, someone who's not forgotten yet due to his words. The greatest wordsmith, as they say, in the English language, composing in the English language by the name William Shakespeare, who Srila Prabhupada sometimes used to quote. It's a good insight into the nature of this material world. And, and most, when we say good writers, it's mostly because they have these novelists, they have insights into the human condition. So William Shakespeare says in his, maybe his most famous play, Macbeth and Hamlet, as two most famous plays, both tragedies. So from Macbeth, Shakespeare says, Life's but a walking shadow, a poor, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. <laughs> it is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Very good insights. Very good insights. And therefore, some transcendentalists, they adopt monavrata. Don't talk to anyone. But some of them, they write things on a board. Well, 
what's the point? <laughs> the, the other thing is just to go completely away from human civilization. So you don't, if everyone's talking nonsense, then just don't, just disassociate, disassociate yourself from it. That's the idea of mona vrata. Another idea why they write on the board, you say, well, if you want to communicate, why don't you just talk? Well, I, I made a vow not to talk. But the idea is that you expend your prana by talking, so better to write on a board, you get less prana expended. Now the idea, just be completely silent and just withdraw completely. Well, that's one idea. The, the other thing is punya shravana kirtana, to describe Krishna and hear about Krishna. That is, in Vaishnava understanding, silence. The, one of the qualities of a devotee given by Lord Krishna and again by Lord Chaitanya is moni, he's silent. It means he doesn't talk nonsense. <clears throat> we should know that what we hear and chant about shapes our consciousness, shapes our, con our conception of reality. We know from Bhagavad Gita, Shadhamayo yang purusha yo yaj chadhasa eva saha. Uh, every living being in this world has, is full of faith. Everyone has some kinds of faith. And, and we are what we believe. We are what we believe. So I take Shraddha in this context to, it translates as a world view. Weltanschauung, as philosophers say. They like to use German words, it sounds fancy. <coughs> but you can say it in English also, world view. We perceive reality according to the, the concept, the concept that we attribute to the world around us. <clears throat> we may be a, a Christian, for instance, and be convinced that Jesus is coming within the next year or two. And that influences our whole way of thinking about the world. And we think that, well, anyone who's not saved by the blood, anyone who's not bathed in the blood of Jesus, they're all going to hell. And they're completely convinced about it. I've watched several YouTube videos of erudite atheists, speaking with, mostly speaking with Christians, who are also erudite, and they both put their position, in their own minds it sounds very logical. They don't shift at all, either, either of the parties. The atheist remains an atheist, the Christian remains a Christian, and they, they see the same world around them. Trees, motor cars, sky, people, but they interpret it differently. For the atheists, they generally think, well, there was, a, there was a big bang and then everything fell into place and we'll all die and there's nothing left. Richard Dawkins recently wrote his autobiography, what is it called? A, a, a Brief Candle in the Darkness. He thinks he's a candle. It, everything's dark and... <laughs> He is a candle. <laughs> of no, they they see it's of no significance. There's that's why the that's one of the good lines the theists have against the atheists. Well, well then there's no meaning to life. There's, yeah, yeah, there's meaning to life in Richard Dawkins' most famous book, The God Delusion, which I read. I didn't find it very convincing, but I guess that was. Uh, predestined to Richard Dawkins would say is because because of uh, the, the Big Bang and then all the molecules fell into place and then the molecules which form this body have made up my brain in such a way that I wouldn't find it very convincing. 
He's he's a uh, he believes in uh, <clears throat> he's an extreme what do you call it? Believe believer in predestiny. Everything's destined. There's no free will. It just you have to do what you say, and you you are forced to because that's the way the the atoms fell in place, and it's all just playing out. Ah. <clears throat> uh, well, that's a good way to say to the uh, atheist, well, then, there's no meaning in life. You say, yeah, there's me. In his book, Richard Dawkins says, yeah, that he was discussing that with a couple of other atheists over uh, their lunch in a pub in Oxford. And we had it, and we said, this is a good meal. Yeah, it's a good meal. So we enjoyed the meal. See, that's their meaning in life. They enjoyed. Yeah, so we enjoy. Enjoy while you can. So they see the world differently and uh, <clears throat> a dog also that example is given by Charnakya uh, that a woman is seen differently by a lusty man is seen as an object of enjoyment and then the f he doesn't give the whole spectrum there are so many the the uh, the father sees his daughter, the brother sees his sister, the husband sees his wife, the son sees his mother, uh, the next door neighbor sees his next door neighbor. Uh, anyway, the lusty man sees as a uh, an object of enjoyment, a beautiful woman. The self-controlled sage sees as a uh, just a, like a stone. <laughs> And the dog sees as something he'd like to eat. <laughs> I would say lion. But you get the idea. You see differently. There, that example is there also we find in the Bhagavatam. What's that verse? Malanam. You can look that up. How when Krishna entered the wrestling arena, different people saw him differently according to their concept of who Krishna is. That's in the tenth canto of Bhagavatam. Krishna enters the wrestling arena. The the wrestlers saw Krishna like a thunderbolt. The Yadus saw him as their relative. Kangsa saw him as death personified. The uh, young women of Mathura saw him as Cupid personified. The elder women saw him as an object of compassion. Give it to me. Give it to me. Mal Mala Nam Ashanin Renam Naravara Stri Nam Smaro Murti Man Gopa Nam Svajano Satang Shiti Bhujam Shashta Svapitro Shishuhu Mrityur Bhojapate Virad Avidu Sham Tatvam Param Yogi Nam Rishinam paradevatete vidito rangam gata sagrajaha. Krishna entered the wrestling arena along with his elder brother. And the various groups of people in the arena regarded Krishna in different ways when he entered it with his elder brother. The wrestlers saw Krishna as a lightning bolt. The men of Mathura as the best of males. The women as Cupid in person. The cowherd men as their relative the impious rulers as a chastiser, his parents as their child, the king of the bhojas, Kangsa, as death, the unintelligent as the Supreme Lord's universal form, the yogis as the absolute truth, and the vrishnis as their supreme worshipable deity. So we see differently according to our concepts, and our concepts are formed by association, and association means largely who we choose to hear from or who we, are, who we do hear from. We may not choose, just like the children, they don't get a choice. They're, they're carted off to the children's prison, otherwise known as school. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're forced to go. Yes. You have no choice. The kids, they don't know. The, 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 and we we learn about reality, but we what what we what we're told is reality. 
Uh, in the school we learn, once upon a time there was nothing, and then there was a big explosion, and then here we all are today. So it's a fairy story, but it's they, they look back at the primitive past when people believed in all these fairy stories, but they're making their own mythology. Nothing exploded. If you say nothing exploded, that means there wasn't an explosion. But in, scientific, in science it means that there was nothing and it exploded. <laughs> but if you multiply by zero, you learn that in the science class, and then you go to the mathematics class and you say multiply anything by zero and it becomes zero. So if you have nothing exploding, that means the explosion becomes nullified. There's no explosion. Anyway, uh, if you ask questions, like and quest children do ask questions, and what's the standard reply? Shut up. <laughs> Isn't it? When you're a kid and you, ask, you start asking, children often have good philosophical questions, and the standard answer is just shut up. Don't, don't ask questions like that. We have a tendency to fantasize also. Where does that come from? Psychologists, ask about that. On this trip to America, I learned what is anime. Maybe you all, maybe you all know. I never heard of it before, but it's a, it's a huge cultural phenomenon. It's nonsense cubed. <laughs> or to the power of more, more than cubed. <laughs> Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Fantasy. It's all fantasy. For that matter, Tom and Jerry is fantasy. Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland. That's high class fantasy. It's, that's a subject they study it in universities. They have a yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, there was a project to put it in all different languages, and it was put in Sanskrit also. What a waste of time! I learned that from Krishna Kshetra Maharaj. He told me that. But what we are doing, we are creating a reality. We, we live in an imagination land. Yesterday I asked Sattva Staprabhu, whose name is Sky Ray. Is that someone, the parents gave that from uh, Star Wars. They give, Star, isn't that what it's called? Star Trek or Star Wars. One, one's a TV show and one's a movie or whatever. So people, they, they, they give their kids names from, from that. Someone made up a name and then they, they give the name like that. So, and it, their concept of reality is, is based on that. They, they believe it. Or they've internalized it to such an extent that they, they believe it's real. That's what the atheistic psychologists will say about religion. The only real thing is atoms. And, and they will, no, not atoms. Just en Everything is energy, right? Everything is just energy. Not even any atom, it's all just energy. But we create our reality. How is that? Yang yang va pismaran bhavam tyajante kalevaram tam tame vaiti kanteya sadatad bhava bhavita. According to what we think about at the time of death, which is largely shaped by what we think about during life, we get another body. Now, what kind of body you get if you're thinking of anime? I don't know. I don't know. But Krishna knows. I still don't actually know what anime is, but it sounds pretty stupid. <laughs> what kind of body are you going to get? It's not going to be auspicious. And if you're thinking of Trump or Biden, or you want to be like that? <laughs> You get a body like that. 
You know, you'll get a, according to our thoughts, we have to prepare ourselves. Elsewhere in Gita, we have Shariram Yadavap no ti yat chap yut krama tishvaraha grihit vaitani sangyati vayur gandha ivashayat. We carry the concepts. We have in our mind some concept. The body gets destroyed, but the concepts, the, the mental but the subtle body forms another body and we take it to the next life. So we... Pr- we prepare our reality, what we consider to be real. It seems to be real. It seems to be real that I am an American. It seems to be real that I am a dog or I am a cat. And it seems to be real. And we prepare our next false reality. False reality. Is that possible? False reality. False concept of reality. Largely by what we hear and discuss. Shravan Kirtan. So, we should be very careful. What we choose to hear and chant about. (coughs) In governments, they, they like to control what people hear about the, the the mass media, they it should be in line with the governments, what the government wants, and the, the curriculum in the schools. They want to control it because by controlling words, they want to control people's minds. And if you if you go outside what is acceptable, you could up de- you could end up dead in prison, or defamed, Hmm? homeless, yeah, they take take everything away from you. Srila Prabhupada would quote, man is the architect of his own destiny. Here's a quote from Srila Prabhupada, we must decide what we want. Whatever you want, you will have. Whatever you want, you will have. That sounds new agey, doesn't it? <laughs> the power of visualization. Actually, it does work, but n- not exactly as we might hope it to work because it's karmana daiva netrena jantur deho papate. We get bodies according to our work under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. So I many times gave this example. Someone may want to be a big leader and they don't have enough punya to be a Trump or a Biden. Yeah, they got some punya to be able to be on top of the pile. They're burning it up pretty fast. <clears throat> so someone may have a strong desire to be a leader and go to uh, uh, leadership training by someone who's pretending not to be a devotee <clears throat> or whatever. But they don't make it. They don't have the karma this time round. So Krishna is very kind. You may have seen in India that at night the, the, the dogs, they run around in the street. The, the vast majority of dogs in India are street dogs or village dogs. And the, the whole idea of having pets, that's just part of pet dogs, is a recent thing imported from the West. Although Krishna had some dogs also, by the way. Datta Treya has dogs. Otherwise, if you keep a dog in your house, according to Shastra, that automatically makes you a Chandala. <coughs> anyway, the dogs run around at night and they, they snarl and they growl and they bark. And among the pack of dogs is anything from four, five, six, seven, not usually not more than about eight. And among them, one will be the leader. So there you go. You wanted to be a leader? <laughs> Krishna arranges <laughs> according to your karma. You go. So the desire to be a leader in this world is the desire, that, that, that desire makes us stay in this world. The desire to be anything in this world makes us stay in this world. 
Therefore, we have to hear again and again and again, Jivasarup Hoy Krishna Nityadas. We can choose, otherwise, there are so many different kinds of illusions which we can hear and chant about. Or we can hear about the Vastavik Vastu, the, the actual reality, the real reality. What we call reality in this world, it's shadow, yatabhasam, that uh, Krishna says. What is that verse? Rite tam yat pratiyeta. Wait a minute. Rite. Rite yat. No, I'm forgetting. Rite. Ah. Rite. Rite tam yat pratiyeta. Yat pratiyeta. Na pratiyeta. Chatmani. Tad vidyad atmano. Maya. Yata baso yata tamaha. Thank you. Krishna tells Brahma, you should know that everything in this world which appears real, it's simply created by my illusory energy. It's like a, a reflection in the darkness. That's all. <laughs> that is... Or... Oh, we have a great example, another one I commonly say, the great John Lennon, another one strutting and fretting his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. He'll be heard for some time. So his, his, uh, his mature philosophy, when he was a bit older and after who knows how many times he'd shot up with heroin and so many other drugs, and he put in one song his philosophy. God is a concept by which we measure our pain. I'll say it again. God is a concept by which we measure our pain. Then he goes on, whole long song. I don't believe the Bible. Da, 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 da. I don't believe in Hitler. Da, 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 da. I don't believe... In Zimmerman, da, 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 Zimmerman means Bob Dylan. That was his name before. I don't believe. He goes on and on, all the things he doesn't believe in, and then he comes to the the profound ending. I just believe in me. Oh my God. But there's more to it. There's more to it. There's more to it, folks. Yoko and me. That's reality. That's reality. He really believed it. And then, sometime after that, he met reality in the form of Smith and Wesson. <laughs> or maybe someone, maybe some other, there must be other companies that make guns, right? But that's the most famous one. He got shot dead. All these people who talk about peace, they all go, Gandhi got shot dead, Martin Luther King, John Lennon, Who else? Who? Malcolm X. Did he speak of peace? He was. Uh, he started speaking about peace. He started talking about peace. And who killed him? His own people? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. And of course, we have the religion of peace. They talk about peace, and they don't bother waiting for you, for someone else to kill you. They, uh, whoops, wait a minute, we're not supposed to make, not supposed to make, it's, it's hate speech, right? In India, get arrested for that. <coughs> so, what does the Shastra tell us? Tamasi ma jyotir gamaya, turn from the unreal to the unreal, from darkness to light. From death to immortality. Sounds like something they preach in the churches also, right? The Bhagavatam, in two verses, distinguishes between words that are empty and useless and those that are punya shravana kirtana. Two verses. Nayadvajas. Chitrapadam hare yasho jagat pavitram pragranita kahi tirtam 
Ushanti manasa nayatra hangsa niramantu shikshaya the profusion of words the that do not describe the personality of Godhead who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the universe are considered by saintly persons to be like a pilgrimage place for crows the swan-like perfected souls take no pleasure there for they dwell in the transcendental abode so there we have it the useless words chitrapadam nayad vachas chitrapadam they very they may be very uh, they may be very uh, ornamental What do you do with something like Macbeth, where they have things which are quotable by transcendentalists? Well, when it's spoken by a transcendentalist, it can be it, then it becomes dovetailed. Then it becomes we can quote Shankara. We do, even though philosophically we have serious differences. <clears throat> then, so useless words those which are places of pilgrimage for crows and tadvag visargo janataga viplavo yasmin prati shlokam abadhavatyapi namanyanantas yashonkitani yach trinvanti gayanti gurnanti sadavaha Srila Prabhupada says his translation on the other hand those words which describe the glories of the unlimited personality of Godhead, his names, his form, his pastimes. It's a different kind of creation. It's the same, the same language. Maybe the same language, use the same word. Maybe a few technical words we use which are not in common English. Or we may use words somewhat differently. Just like we, we have the three, or we have uh, usages which are not known outside our own circle, like the three modes of nature. So the word three modes of nature, these four words are well known to anyone walking around in Charlotte, North Carolina, but if you say three modes of nature, they won't understand what you're talking about. But basically we're using the same words, but it's a different creation, it, it's a, a, a different... Uh, different platform altogether, like a different dimension, those words which describe the personality of Godhead. And those words are meant to bring about a revolution in a sinful, among the sinful populace. Such transcendental words, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by purified people who are thoroughly honest. Uh, in the original it was purified men who are thoroughly honest. Anyway, the point is that we should glorify Krishna. That will that is pious. And we should also know how to glorify Krishna. Just like uh if we meet a uh we, we happen to run into the chief of police for all of North Carolina. I presume they have a chief of police for all of North Carolina. And you see he's a policeman and you talk to him and then you say Oh, you're, you're the nicest uh, police constable. What do they call them? It's troopers or something? The, the, the lowest lowest level. Officer. officer. Uh, anyway, I'll say in English, English. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Poli you're, the, you're, the, you're the nicest police constable I ever met. So it's praising him, but if you, by calling him a police constable, it's the lowest rank when he's actually the chief of police for all the state. So we have to know how to glorify Krishna also, which means we have to he hear about Krishna. We'd, we don't have that, it's there within our heart, knowledge of Krishna, but it's dormant. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem, Shadda Kabunoi, Shavanadi Shuddha Chitti. It has to be reawakened by hearing. And we have to hear from people who give us the right conception of Krishna. It's very important who we hear from. 
Otherwise, we can learn about that which is to be learned about, but if you learn about it in the wrong way, we won't get the same result. It's possible to speak about Krishna all day and be not just mundane, but actually poisonous. As we know, avaishnava mukhod girnam putam harikatam ritam shravana naiva kartavya sarpo chishtam yatapaya. Someone's, oh, harikata. Someone's speaking harikata. Let's go and listen. No, 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 it's poison. No, it's harikata. It's nectar. No, it's poison. No, it is nectar. He's, he's reading from Bhagavatam. But the, the nectar can become poison, just like milk, which is glass of milk, a poisonous snake, drinks a little, slithers away, and whatever's left has got the snake's poison. So it's still milk, it's still nectar, but now it became, the effect is poisonous. So we should know, we should hear from the proper people, glorify Krishna and his devotees, not be enamored by mundane qualities, Kulin, Pandit, Dhani, these are different categories. Someone of high birth, high learning, wealthy, glorify Krishna, not mundane people. The tendency to glorify is there. Srila Prabhupada often pointed that out. To glorify some big film star or, or musician or sportsman or woman or not sure, sport something. <laughs> Uh, the tendency to glorify is there, but that should be properly directed toward Krishna. Otherwise, Shravid Varahoshra Karai Sangstuta Purusha Pashaho Nayat Karna Patope Tas Jatu Nama Gadagrajaha. People who are like hogs, dogs, camels, and asses, they praise other hogs, dogs, camels, and asses. Because, in other words, the people who are praised, they're on the level of animals. It's animals glorifying animals. This is what's going on in the material world. Because the name of Krishna never entered their ears. And if we hear about Krishna, then why, why should you adulate anyone else? Krishna is the biggest celebrity. Yashasha, one of his qualities. He's the most famous. What are the qualities? Wealth, Aishwarya, Samagrasya, Virya. We, we glorify someone if they're wealthy, or we, we glorify, or we may envy them, or whatever, but we hear about them. We, we've heard about uh, Bill Gates. Wealthy. He's a very important person, because he's wealthy. That's one reason he became wealthy by his Microsoft company, which has had tremendous impact in the world today. He's wealthy, so he's wealthy, he's famous. Aishwarya says, powerful, we adulate someone if they're powerful, famous, beautiful, knowledgeable, Detached, I don't think people even have any concept of being detached in American culture. And Krishna has all these qualities in full. Getting back to that, uh, what is that, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all the... the maybe one reason is so popular, because it's stories of amazing things being done. But Krishna actually does amazing things, and it's not make-believe. That's the difference. There's, in the movies, they have stunts. Maybe they don't do it anymore. It's all done by animation. I don't know. But Krishna does it really. It's all reality. So we should glorify Krishna. That will be pious, that will bring us to Krishna. We won't become Krishna. That's another great misconception. I 
saw a book a devotee had written, it was dedicated to his father, who wasn't a devotee. He wrote, son, this, de this book is dedicated to my father, and he gave the name, who has lived his life with integrity, purpose, and achievement. Something like that. Okay, but it's all, it's all temporary. It's not on the platform of reality. That's why there was a time, I don't, I don't hear it much now, but we always used to hear so much about Mother Teresa and how you should, you should learn from the character of Mother Teresa. And we used to hear a lot of Mother Teresa Kata. Why? <laughs> we don't have, I mean, even if you think that she has good qualities, we don't have in our own tradition devotees with good, good qualities that we have to learn from some meat eater living in the land of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu whose main goal in life was to convert people from not being, to stop being devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and become a meat eating Christian. And we glorify her because she used to pick people up off the street when they were dying and bring them to her home so they could die there. And if they got better, put them back on the street. That's another Western propaganda. Otherwise, there are so many welfare workers here, there, and everywhere, all over India and everywhere else. Anyway, I'm just wondering why, why, why should devotees be enamored by these things? All right, if you see some good qualities. Sh Srila Prabhupada, he quoted Napoleon, his determination. He would sleep... He would Sleep on his horse. That was, he's, he found some good quality. It was not that Srila Prabhupada wrote a, you know, a whole book about Napoleon. He quoted it. Okay, that's something you can take. But really our role models are the devotees of Krishna. We should know. Bhagavad Bhakti. Hinasya. Jati Shastra Japas Tapaha. Apranasya Eva Dehasya. Mandanam loka ranjanam. You may see someone, they look to be, no, mandanam, mandanam loka ranjanam. It's manda, the manda is manda, the decoration is useless. You may somewhere see someone from a distance, oh, they look very nice, they're nicely dressed, and so many nice ornaments, and you go close and you see it's a dead body. Oh, some people do that. The body, they, the bodies, dead and then they put some, they dress the body nicely and you come, people come to pay their last respects. Their last respects. To who? <laughs> to who what? What is it? They come and it's all dressed up nicely. Yeah. What's the point of dressing a dead body? So. So-called good qualities without Krishna consciousness. What is that? Yes, yasti bhaktiya bhagavatya kinchana sarai gurnais tatra samasite saraha harava bhaktasya kuto mahad guna mano retainasati davatovi. Devotees, they have good qualities, but non-devotees, even though it may seem they have good qualities, but they don't really have very great qualities because it's all on the mental plane. So we should learn who to hear and chant about. And there's so I was just looking in the temple, there's songbook, so many songbooks, Vallabh Sampradaya. In Bridgebasha, so many devotees have made so many songs, so many writings in praise of Krishna. So better we do that. Here's a well-known verse. Just to finish this up. There are so many. Shantakaram bhujagashayanam padmanabham suresha. You know this, you learned this as a child. The smarters in South India, they all know this. No, it's good. It's good. But you get the wrong concept if you don't come to Prabhupada's lotus feet. You, you remain a smarter. Shantakaram bhujagashayanam padmanabham suresham Vishvadharam gagana sadrisham megavarnam shubangam Lakshmi kantam kamalanayanam yogi bhe dhyanagam yam Vande Vishnung bhavabhayaharam saravalokaikanatam The very form of peace who, who 
rests on a snake bed whose navel is from from his navel comes the lotus who is the the lord of all the demigods the basis of the universe who looks like the sky whose color is is like a cloud whose whole body bodily limbs are all auspicious who is the husband of lakshmi who has eyes like a lotus who is the one that the yogis in their meditation aspire to attain we offer our respects to that vishnu who is the uh, destroyer of fear and the only one lord of everyone there are so many nice prayers hare krishna i'll finish that so uh questions and we can write down for this afternoon's uh questions and answers session if the weather forecast is wrong we could still go on hari nam if not we'll have a questions and answers session hari krishna, hare krishna. punya shravana kirtana bhagavan ki jai hare.